Assalamu alaikum my dear Muslim friends. Hello, hello, hello guys. Welcome back to Annie's vlog channel. This is me Annie your girl and Annie is back with another video reaction guys. So if you're ready to watch together with me, please do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and follow up to my Instagram and Facebook page. Thank you so much. And today our video gonna be about beautiful country, amazing landscape, Indonesia. So our video gonna be about Indonesia's quiet rise as an Asian superpower. Ready? Let's watch. When thinking of Asian superpowers, people automatically think of Japan, Korea, and China. But shocking to most, one of the highest ranked economies in Asia is actually Indonesia. Located between oh, the continents of Greater it's, it's Asia and Australia, me. as well as between the Indian and Pacific Oceans, Indonesia has been dubbed mm -hmm. the Emerald of the Equator. The beauty and power of this overlooked country now boasts to be a shining example of what a true hidden gem can achieve. In this video, we'll go over Indonesia, its quickly growing economy and its huge potential to become one of the world's strongest and most surprising forces in the world. It's easy to understand wow. why Indonesia is often overlooked regarding ranking I, I economies. Really didn't know about it's a Southeast facts. Asian country that has been colonized by Westerns, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the Germans, and the British. Colonized countries tend to have weaker economies due to their need to recover from their losses during colonization. Naturally, Indonesia had to recuperate its losses from all the years under foreign rule. From its year of independence in 1945 until before the introduction of the new order in the 1960s, Indonesia's economy was deplorable, to say the least. The colonization of foreign forces heavily impaired Indonesia's production and export of rubber and oil. Following this, Indonesia's attempt to quickly repair economic conditions was macroeconomic solutions while ignoring microeconomic problems, resulting in inflation, poverty, and hunger. Fortunately, the years after the 1960s were the turning point. The New Order administration, led by then-President Suharto, was put into effect and stabilized the currency, decreased inflation, and attracted foreign aid and investment. They solely focused on revitalizing the economy while enforcing strict laws which improved the country's overall organization. The reforms in the country's policies in the 1980s resulted in an even better rise in the economy. In fact, from 1989 to 1997, Indonesia's economy was growing at an amazing rate of 7% during this time frame. While the 1997 Asian financial crisis didn't spare Indonesia, the country was quick to its feet and continued its economic growth. While Indonesia's GDP has seen an upward trajectory since the 1980s, its growth in the 21st century is what's most impressive. Sitting at a GDP of 986.8 billion US dollars in 2000, Indonesia is projected to have a GDP of 5,800.6 billion dollars by 2027. Much of Indonesia's 21st century success in economics can be attributed wow. to their 20-year development plan spanning from wow. 2004 oh to 2024. This development plan called the RPJMN, so which, which translates country? to National Medium-Term Development Plan in English, is segmented to one 20-year long-term development plan, as well as four five-year medium-term development plans, each with different development priorities. For example, in terms of environment, the 2015 to 2019 RPJMN focused on developing renewable and sustainable resources, while the current 2020 to 2024 RPJMN focuses on addressing deforestation, forest degradation, and other environmental concerns. Each medium-term RPJMN builds upon the previous one in order to have a methodological process of advancement in their economy. Unlike other countries where there is a clear sector that does the heavy lifting for the country's GDP, like manufacturing for China or petrol for Middle Eastern countries, Indonesia's rise in their economy is thanks to multiple sectors of their economy performing well. Manufacturing is the biggest contributor to Indonesia's economy, which is responsible for around 20% of the country's GDP. Textiles and garments, food and beverages, electronics, automotive, and chemicals are the most mass-manufactured industries in Indonesia. In fact, Indonesia is currently the 10th largest manufacturing nation in the world. 
In addition, manufacturing employs one-fifth of Indonesia's working age, employing about 25 million workers. With the current rate of manufacturing and production resulting in an average of 4% annual growth, coupled with the government's plan to further enhance current rates, Indonesia has a high chance of entering the world's top 10 economies through manufacturing alone. Despite the success of their manufacturing sector, agriculture still makes up a huge chunk of the country's economy, making up around 14.43% of the country's economy. Indonesia produces a whole bevy of products and commodities, the most prominent being rice, cassava, tapioca, peanuts, natural rubber, cocoa, coffee, palm oil, copra, poultry, beef, pork, and eggs. Palm oil especially is very vital to Indonesia's agriculture and economy as Indonesia is the biggest producer of palm oil in the world, producing half of the world's palm oil oh supply. My gosh. It's just Other sectors news, yeah. that contribute to Indonesia's economic growth include the oil and mining industry. Indonesia is the biggest producer of nickel and the second biggest producer of cobalt in 2022. While a lot of Indonesia's economic success is attributed to laws, politics, as well as the previous and current administration's governance, Geographic, political, and geopolitical features also lend themselves to Indonesia's success. Geographically, Indonesia is in a very good location. As mentioned earlier, Indonesia sits right between Greater Asia and Australia, as well as the Indian and Pacific Oceans, making Indonesia a sensible trade route for surrounding countries. As the largest archipelagic country in the world, it only makes sense that Indonesia capitalizes on its own geostrategic advantages by establishing itself as the world's maritime axis. Despite being a great contender for being a maritime center, Indonesia isn't making strides to make itself a maritime country due to current trading routes. Also, another reason why Indonesia has quietly risen as a top Asian superpower is the fact that Indonesia is the de facto leader of ASEAN, ASEAN, which is the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Indonesia is a founding member of ASEAN, which was established in 1967. This entails a political and economic union of all 10 participating countries. Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam, which promises to accelerate economic growth through the help of one another, while also maintaining peace and stability between each nation. Indonesia is also a member of APEC, or the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, an intergovernmental forum that consists of Asian countries as well as other countries surrounding the Pacific Ocean, such as Australia, mm -hmm. New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Peru, and the United States, among many other countries. APEC promotes the free trade of products between APEC members, which allows trading of agricultural products and raw materials. APEC is also considered one of the highest level multilateral blocs and the oldest forums in the Asia-Pacific region. Because of Indonesia's rising potential to become a superpower, as well as its strategic geographic location, established superpowers like China and the United States are both seeking to strengthen their continued relationship with Indonesia. While Indonesia remains neutral about the China-United States feud, Lowy Institute's 2021 poll reveals that Indonesians find the United States more important than China for Indonesia's economy, with 18% voting for the United States compared to 14% voting for China. Additionally, 4 in 10 Indonesians prefer investments from the United States, compared to 3 in 10 from China. As it stands, Indonesia remains neutral and has no bias to where it sides, though the interest of the two most powerful nations in the world shows how important Indonesia is, causing a cascading effect of foreign investors to be more attracted to Indonesia. Indonesia had a roaring 2022, with an economic boom of 5.3%, the highest since 2013, and it looks like the country's economic streak has no end in sight. Indonesia remains the world's top producer of nickel and palm oil, and the second best to many other products. While the Indonesian government states that 2023 might not be as strong of an increase like 2022, the government is still positive that a 5% increase is possible for 2023. Indonesia is still on track to fulfilling its 20-year RPGMN plan in hopes of fully realizing the goal of the plan, with outlooks looking positive given the current state of the growth of the country. 
Guys, you know what? Like uh, last time I watched, uh, we did 10 wonderful places in Indonesia to visit. And today we are watching the superpower of um, Indonesia. So, you know what? Like, I'm getting more in more into Indonesia after watching the places and economics because Indonesia stays on the top of Asian countries also. So let's read uh, some comments about this video. Okay. Um, as an Indian, Indian, Indian person writing, I love how mild, clean and calm Indonesians are. I totally agree because I had many friends, many Indonesian friends uh, from Indonesia and um, they were also Muslims, yeah. And some of them were not Muslim, yeah. And I didn't saw that in Indonesia we can meet a lot of um, Muslim girls and men and Muslim people. So, okay. Uh, their country is poised for a slow but sustained success. Mm -hmm. While India is also someone like that. Indian water blocks are obsessed with sectarian power grabs than things that matter to all Indian citizens. This is where the general dem demoniac of the people comes into play. Okay, Indonesians are generally milder, people have their energy focused where it matters, exactly. Islam keeps the work agendas in check. They calmly develop and become powerful naturally at an organic pace. At a perfect example of how slow and steady wins the race. Exactly, yeah, now he's explaining that it's steady growing, but getting success yeah so another uh comments about this video all we ever want is stability exactly because not even in the country for the country stability is important for all a human being being stability is really important because um it can give you success and it can you can develop a habit by staying stability right okay so okay uh our yeah peace and prosperity our stance is always neutral in geopolitics but no each of them we have to face obstacles from both internal and external okay and the last one is i am from indonesia and I always believe that one day we will become a great and rich country. Hopefully we do. So, so yeah, I was, um, I got really good information after watching these videos. I hope you got it too. Thank you so much for watching this video together with me. So if you want to watch the original video in the down description below, guys, thank you so much and see you next time. By the way, do not forget to write some comments about this video guys thank you so much and bye bye guys